Well, hello, y'all. Figured I'd give a little update of what I've been up to. So the first thing is I got a new power supply. NST, 9 kilovolt, 30 milliamp, most NSTs. Been experimenting with different primaries, and I have a new secondary going thanks to Ryan Abrams Lab Tesla Art. I, I put two coats of lacquer on it, and now I'm putting a third, or it's epoxy resin, clear, it's clear epoxy resin. <clears throat> Not polyester, that, don't use that stuff, that stuff doesn't insulate very well. And then uh, I s upgraded my bulb to a 90 watt halogen. And that's and I did some other transmission experiments. Um, receiver, a receiver that I was using that as a receiver coil, but I was trying to see how much voltage I could push push out of this to see how much potential this setup has. And I have a new primary too. I need to wrap, but that's for for later. But I'm I was finding breakout on the under layers because I'm using corrugated tube for this. So. I either need to douse the whole thing in oil or, you know, insulate the entire thing in epoxy, or I can just, oops, I got a finger in that shot, or I can just make it my receiver. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to make it my receiver. And I have some ideas for a top load, too, kind of a dual top load, and I've expressed that to a couple people, but the thing is, is the fabrication of it's kind of gonna be a little tricky so I'm you know when I make this other uh, transmitter coil then I'll try to I'll try to fabricate it or come up with some way I'm still kinda debating that but real quick I'll show you the output of the light pretty bright and also I watched a video of a couple people two people in particular uh, doing hairpin circuit, beautiful hairpin setups. Uh, the only thing that I find interesting is I think they were putting, they were using CFLs, which kind of works a little better for magnetic fields. But if you do put it like that, like it, it, they were putting them all in parallel, and I don't think that that is. I, I believe even in, in the Tesla patent, he said to put them in series. The reason for that is to just increase their potential voltage and actually create res a resistive load. If you don't create a, re a good resistive, because the CFL doesn't have a whole lot of resistance. Um, once the uh, phosphorus ignites, you know, like uh, once it gets excited, because it, it's a plasma in there, it doesn't have a whole lot of resistance, and plasma is incredibly conductive. So, I think that he he Tesla recommended to put them in. Serious. So if anybody out there who has done the hairpin circuit and was doing that and wants increased brightness, uh, that's just a suggestion. I don't know if it will work or not, but it's always worth experimenting. Uh, turn this on real quick again, and then I have one more uh, science question for you folks out there who have experimented with this. First of all, as you can see, the, the near field lights up pretty well with my fingers on this side, but if I switch it, See, it doesn't light up nearly as bright it's because I'm adding capacitance to it. So, and also, obviously, if I put it on there, you know, it'll glow pretty bright. Um, but if I don't touch it at all, see, oh, look at that, it's not lighting up. See that? So, once I touch it, you can see it lights up for my capacitance on, off, on, off. So, just a little, little mention. But if I turn it this way, then it's exciting the, the mercury and phosphorus. Mercury vapors and phosphorus creating the plasma, all that stuff. But this is this was my question for some of you science folks out there, some of you people who uh, have experimented with high voltages. In sync incandescent, I've been using it for a while now. Uh, no break in the tungsten element, but I'm finding if you look in there, the ionization that's happening, that green, there's a green plasma, and it's been getting stronger and stronger, and. Uh, of course, also another thing to show is when this is attached on top load and basically, in essence, acting like a ground, it affects the dump of the, uh, or the load of the hairpin. Um, and that's because this is the transmitter. It's grounding out to me, basically, and into the bulb. But if I have a receiver, that doesn't happen, and it's far more efficient that way. Um, so that's just a 
figured I'd state that. Just some of you out there. And real quick, go to this just so you can get a better view of this. It's green because it's it's pretty it's pretty cool. Um, let's see it there. Watch it be some X-rays, right? <laughs> Um, pretty cool. And then, the last thing is, uh, if, if I pull the spark gap apart, the spark gap in this compared to capacitive discharge into a primary, uh, a spark gap across like this, has a frequency that is, uh, seems to be a lot uh, a lot higher, has a lot higher of a frequency, um, and I'll show it real quick, but it's, my kids, are, my family's sleeping, so it's loud, but, that's all in my show, <laughs> like, you're gonna get mad at me, I've already done it twice, um, but that's pretty much, I'm wrapping this, uh, I wrapped it already, just letting it cure in some epoxy, a little by filer two-tone pancake coil. And yeah, I just figured I'd give an update and a shout-out, a couple shout-outs. I'm not sure if I gave a couple, but, <laughs> but I figured I'd give an update on what's going on. I'm eventually going to start working with the vacuum chamber again once I get a proper coil set up, and I, I'm actually going to experiment with to the the potential at the both ends of the secondary and do some experiments with that and uh, visualize them in, in the plasma chamber or the vacuum chamber and as far as measurements go on this so it's it's 25 in mercury and I was talking to Binge and he kind of we kind of figured it out um, that it's probably about 20% of atmosphere, atmospheric press, pressure, so, so it's not the strongest vacuum, it's definitely not a, <laughs> it's definitely not a high vacuum, um, but, it, f from what I can tell, the reason why is because the seal, the silicone seal here is not that great for that, and so, I'll have to, uh, if I had the resources, I would, because <laughs> I have a nice pump for it, if I had the resources, I would actually get a, st a steel chamber with a viewing window and all that kind of stuff. I don't have the resources for that. So, um, you know, I got to make do with what you got. So thank you to everybody watching. Uh, love y'all and hope all is well with you and yours. Thank you for watching.